Well, hi, good to see you. Uh, I'm Anthony. I'm one of the pastors here at Real Life. Uh, today, I'm joined by a friend of mine, John Lane. Uh, we, we recognize as a church leadership team that there are people going through uh, job loss, job transition right now. There's a lot of disruption happening in the lives of people. And uh, as a team, as we were thinking through who could lend their voice to this, uh, our friend John came up. Uh, John helps lead worship for us on weekends on occasion, so his face should be familiar, uh, serves in a couple of different areas of the church as well. Uh, and so, John, I'd love for you just to kind of introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your family, and catch us up to speed on the job transition that you went through not too long ago. Thanks. Uh, again, my name is John Lane. Uh, my wife is Jenny Lane. Um, she's beautiful and sweet and smart and caring and so gentle. And those of you who know, know her, she's exactly that way. Um, We've been married for 19 years. We have a 14-year-old high school boy. We have a 11-year-old, uh, I'm sorry, she just turned 12, um, just turned 12 a couple weeks ago, 12-year-old uh, middle schooler. And then we have a six-year-old um, boy, a kindergartner. So uh, they keep us all uh, busy, dropping them off at school, at three different schools in the morning. And yeah, that's, that's so this is kind of crazy where we're going through right now to where you know, we've got these three kids that, that, that are now at home, and mom's a part-time teacher and, and as a part of that. So, yeah, it's yeah, craziness, for sure, for sure. and we yep. love it right now, right? Yeah, and so Jenny, yeah, Jenny uh, works uh, as a teacher, and uh, mm -hmm. you, you work as well, but you're kind of that primary kind of financial provider for the family, and that, right. that went away for a season not too long ago, huh? It did. It did uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, uh, I ended up uh, losing my job. Um, I kind of had a feeling it was coming. I was actually um, praying to God quite often to say, find me another job, find me another job. Um, I had been with this company for almost 16 years hmm. and uh, yeah, a little over 16 years actually. And, and just was unhappy the last year and a half I was there was just unhappy. And I kept praying to God to say, find me something else. And so I began looking to try and find stuff, but at the other side of it, you know, um, a hundred percent of your job should be doing your job. The other 10% should be looking for something else. A wise person once told me that. Right. <laughs> and, um, so that's what I was doing. Right. So I was still doing my job and doing what I needed to do, but I was also looking for stuff and, and just talking to people. Um, but, uh, unfortunately a day in August came around where, uh, the company had, that I was working for decided to have some other plans and sent me on my way. And, um, and drove me home, and as I gathered up my belongings from my office, and they drove me home. Um, now, that's when it all kind of kicked in. Yeah, yeah, because you, I mean, you, you had a company car, you had a company phone, and all of a sudden those things were, were gone. Right, right, yeah. so I got home, and I, and I called up Jenny, and, and uh, from the home phone, on her cell phone, and she's like, hey, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I lost my job, and so, she uh, she fortunately happened to be, she's a team teacher, so she teaches 50% and the other teacher teaches 50%. And so she was, they, they fortunately happened to both be working that day. So she came home and uh, was able to spend the rest of the afternoon with me. Uh, but, you know, out of all these different things that happened, you're sitting here, you, you've got these three emotions that come up. And I know that as a guy that this is, this when really we suffer any kind of disappointment, we suffer the angerness we suffer the bitterness and we suffer the sadness and they're all three emotions and they can actually all actually three hit at the same time and i was mm. truly going through that that afternoon um and then as well into the weekend but even again on on monday when jenny went back to work and the kids went back to school and i didn't have anywhere to go and i just remember going and sitting down at the computer and going on linkedin and just trying to, you know, get my resume ready and um, just having the loneliness kick in now into the angerness and the bitterness and the sadness yeah. and that everybody else is working and I'm not now. And, and I, I just remember working on the computer for about two and a half hours and then finally just going, I, I got to get up and do something. Mm. And as guys, that's, that's the way we're wired is 
we're wired to where we got to get up and do something and, and have this kind of sense of accomplishment that we accomplished something. We did something, you know, that's, that's what we do when we go to jobs, you know, whether it be construction or whether it be to, to, you know, as an accountant or whatever, there's so many that's, and I'm not saying that women or anybody else doesn't do it, but guys, that's how we feel our sense of self-worth, right? Sure. Is, is when we have accomplished something and we know that we can look back at it and say where we got from this point to that point, and it did it and we're good. And so I literally just had to go out and wash the car, a mm. car that mind you, I had, I'd never, uh, I had not owned a car in almost 18 years because I had a company car for all that time. Oh, wow. But there was some time back in March of the year that I got let go about five months prior to getting let go. Um, that God just said, you know, you might want to go out and buy a car. I don't know why I just went out and bought a cheap used car and it was a few grand or whatever. And so I bought this cheap used car. So at least I had some transportation to and from to get me to go to interviews and look for jobs and do all that kind of thing. It was absolute um, craziness. Uh, um, I do remember posting on Facebook that, hey, I lost my, I lost my phone today along with my job. <laughs> and, 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 and so if you need to get a hold of me, just message me on Facebook. And I just was, remember all the, go ahead. Was that a was that a scary thing just to kind of tell the world like, hey, I lost my job. Like, tell me, tell me about how that felt. Cause so many people going through totally. this right now, like they don't know, like, is that a safe thing to tell people? How do you tell people? Can you tell people without like throwing a pity party for yourself? You know what I mean? Like walk, yeah, walk yeah, me yeah. through I, all, all yeah. those pieces. Yeah, I didn't, uh, you know, I just remember posting that and just and wondering and debating about whether to post it. I know I posted it in the guys forum um we have a our, our, our group of glendora guys we call it glendora guys well, there's guys from all over right but we call it our glendora guys but that's because that's primarily where we meet i ended up posting it there and just letting those guys know that hey guys pray for me i lost my job i knew i could go to those guys those mm. are my tight-knit group of guys that's that good. um that i think every guy should have it was just a tight-knit group of guys maybe uh 30 on the page, but really there's probably only about six, seven, eight, maybe a dozen or so that That's are actually close, truly, yeah. yeah, that are tight, tight knit group guys. But it's, it's each one of those guys just to pray for me and offer me support and say, you know, you got this, don't worry, you'll find something better. So it, you kind of got to practice it first. Like you practice with Jenny and then you yeah. practice with those guys. Yeah. And then you're yeah. able to tell others. Yeah. And then, and then I was, so it was, it was literally going from just, you know, and, and my, and my, I remember telling my dad and my brothers as well. So really just close family yep. to, to, close group of friends right my my tight-knit group of guys and then and then moving right into just hey this is what happened today and someone ended up seeing that and 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 uh, another christian another person that's in the industry the same industry that i'm in and she said have you talked to this person yet and i said i haven't she's like you need to talk to her so I ended up talking to her and we became friends on Facebook and we knew each other. We just were friends on Facebook. And so she's like, would you be interested in doing this? And I'm like, of course I'd be interested in doing anything. It, they're out of town. They're traveling. She, you know, and she was just like, I'm so sorry to hear, you know, let me see if we can find you something. Boom. And, and so they began this process of, of she, she ended up talking to, to who was, who was, was my boss who just recently re retired. Right. Yeah. So, um, and and so that's where I got to where I'm at today it was just by going on there and just saying, it, like I said, like you said as well, it's, it's not a pity party. It's literally the humility of, I need some help. That's, yeah. that's I think that as, as guys, we're, we feel like we're the, the breadwinners. We're the sole providers. We need to provide for our family. You got three kids, you got a roof over your head and, and you don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose any of that at all. And so you're going to do whatever you can to do to try and make sure that, you know, you do that. So as you're, you're looking at all these different jobs, even though I had, you know, something that was looking very promising, I was also looking at, you know, other jobs as well and other people in the industry and looking all over the place and, and, and amazingly people calling me up and contacting me and emailing me and say, Hey, call this guy, call this guy, call this guy. So I had this really huge network of people, not just helping me look for a job, but I had a massive group now because I shared that on social media and stuff of people just praying for me. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. That's, uh, that's massive. Yeah. And, and the way you tell it, it sounds like things happened right away, but you actually had, there was like eight to 10 weeks where you didn't have a job. That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. So like looking yeah. back on it a year and a half yeah. later, you can go, and here's these things that happened, but I'm sure that felt like it took a really long time. Oh, 
You have no idea. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I'm I'm talking about from the Friday to the Monday. Yeah, and then the Monday, and you know, washing the car and the anger and bitterness and sadness. No, man, this went on for weeks upon end. You know, to where you're still trying to look for a job and you're worried. And then around that eight week mark is when I really got, I really, really, really got concerned because, um, again, got to provide for our family. Got to look at you know what if there's a recession? What if it, it, again? kind of just weird things are happening that the industry wasn't going really really well it wasn't like we had a bunch of you know it wasn't like the tech industry up in san jose that was doing it was nothing like that it was yeah. just you know we're just kind of a group of contractors in the contracting industry and that's and so um to, but it's, to it sounds like i mean so you know if if somebody's going through job loss being able to you know practice with safe people talking about it but then actually being yeah. Being bold and humble enough just to let your network know, let your community know, hey, I'm going through this, really opened up some doors for you. But I imagine in doing that, there are people who said some helpful things and they were helpful in helpful ways. And I'm sure you could imagine things that people could say, I'm sure no one said it to you, but things people could say that are less helpful to someone experiencing right. job loss. Right. Like, how would you coach somebody who's, who's not experiencing it, but somebody they know is, whether it's a spouse who just lost a job or, you know, a friend, like, what are some good things to say? What are some things to try to avoid say? Like what, what kinds of things could be accidentally hurtful? Well, that's a good question, man, because I don't think I had a lot of people that were really that way towards me. That's cool. Um, but that's, that's, that says something about a lot of the, the people that you choose to be around with, that's right? Fair. You know, yeah. that, um, um, what, what were some of the most helpful things? So people, tried to work their networks for you. That was, that was a cool gift. Are there other things that people were able to, to do or say for you, to you? Yes. Yeah, so, well, if, if I look at it, Anthony, and, and, and I sit here and I say, you know, I was praying to get out of my job. Yeah. God, find me another job, right? Uh, find me one. And then, and then to, to God, for to, to God come in and say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take you out of this job. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to get you another job. But God comes in and just says, yeah, you're going to have to get fired to do that, though, right? So all of this me, me, me trying to work for something else and praying to God that God help me, help me, help me, God's now saying, just trust me, trust yeah. me, trust me. Hmm. Have faith in me. I'll find you something else. Yeah. Not to say that I shouldn't do anything myself and not to say that I didn't have a massive group of friends um, surrounding me and helping me out. It, 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 it was a massive group of friends but it was god literally saying every single day trust me and and as a guy and as a even though i've been a believer most of my life it doesn't matter there still comes a point in time where you freak out because you're a guy it's our human nature that's who yeah, we yeah. are that's what god made us is so you, you do you come to that around that seventh or eighth week six seventh eighth eighth for sure um that you started making other phone calls and you started saying, okay, I, I do have an offer over here. And I really, I can't say no to this guy because, you know, I may have something over here. It, it, it this, this is a good job. I know it'd be a good thing to go to work for this guy over here, but I'd really like to pursue this one over here. This is a good opportunity for me. It, and so you have, um, I, I guess you could say you, you always have friends, you always have family, who are always praying for you and saying it'll come along. And as you sit here and you talk about how everything that really happened with me getting my job to where I'm at right now was a God thing. Hmm. It just was everything. Um, and to be able to share that with people, I think um, after the, after the fact, after I started my new job was just to sit here and say, there's just way too many things that are just happening just to happen. There's no way that it just, I ended up getting a job to where it was four miles away from my house. Right. There's no way. Right. That, that just doesn't happen. Yeah. Especially in the contracting industry in Southern California. Like I said, I was looking all over. So as you're looking all over, even in Seattle, um, as we have family up there, but to come back and just say, here it is four miles away, that, you know, and to sit down and meet with a boss who says, hey, and you tell them like, this is my, my concern that I got to drop off my kids in the mornings that my wife works. I do realize that if I'm traveling, I can go on ahead and, 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 and uh, if I'm traveling, I can, you know, uh, get my dad or someone or a neighbor or someone to take them. But, and he's, he's like, no, 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 you're okay. Most mm -hmm. of the, 
I don't even have an office for you. You're going to have to work out of your house. So this office that's 3.9 miles away from you, you're, you're working out of your house. Most mm. of, and you really aren't. You're really working out of your car and going to see customers, which is the best part about, you know, going out and seeing, meeting people and getting to know them and developing relationships with them. And I think that that's what it boils down to is we all need to have relationships um, and, and deep relationships, not just uh, a relationship with, hey, how are you doing? It's good to see you. But to, to literally, do I know you, Anthony? Do you, mm. do, do you really know me? Right. And it's that, it's that breaking down of the manly kind of, I guess you could say, you know, the we don't want to talk about that type. Of, no, you, you, can still, you can still talk about it over scotch. Right. And, and, and yeah, your, you your guys group is one of those groups. Yep. Uh huh. Right. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah, right. Yeah, you can still talk about it over a beer and, and you'd be surprised as far as uh, what's, what's said during those because you're breaking down that, 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 um, that pride and, and everything to move forward. Um, and to learn more about the people that you're, you're hanging out with. Yeah. yeah. Let me uh, let me let me ask this. So let's say somebody's watched all the way through, right? They've watched our conversation, uh, mm -hmm. and they're on the other side of the screen, and they're they're in week one or two of this. You know what I mean? Like they've they they got noticed. They've been let go. They've been furloughed. They're early on. Right. You, get, you get to say something to them, and we'll we'll kind of leave them right. with, with this. What would you what would you tell someone? They're on that front end. You've experienced God's faithfulness. Like you learned to trust him in the midst of that. But like, yeah. what, would you tell, yeah. what would you tell them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just going to have to trust him. You know, we're truly going through unprecedented times right now. Um, you know, I, I, I have to look back at my, when I lost my job, I have to look back at it. I'm sure part of that was my fault. You know, that, that it wasn't, I just can't blame them 100%. No, I'm sure there was a lot of it that was probably my fault as well. But, I just did not really get attitude towards them anymore. It could have been, you know, it just, it's just, it's so many different variables. But for right now, you look at what we're going through, it's, it's unprecedented. Um, we're, we're dealing with this, right, this silent enemy, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. right? Um, that we just don't know what it's going to do to us. We're all a little bit scared right now. We're all a little bit concerned anyways, because we're at this new normal of we've never had to wear a mask going outside before. Right. 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 Yeah. It is just, it is odd. Uh, but I, I'm so concerned for, for everybody who's lost a job right now. Um, I don't like to get political by any means, but I am so concerned of, of people not going back to work that will have a much, um, more dire situation if we don't go back to work. Working is actually good for us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I truly believe God created work for us so where we could go and learn more about him each day and, and um, seeing that sense of accomplishment and, yeah. and moving forward where we're at. That um, if you're at home and you're trying to just deal with losing a job, you know you can you can go out and do things around the house or you can go out and um spend that time with your family i think that's the biggest thing right now is is it really is kind of fun right now to go out and hang out with your family yeah. um and know well, that I, you can because i don't I, I i'm still working and there's still work going on but there are times when it's like yeah i just need to get outside for a little while too and what's the best way to do that is to go on a walk with the kids around the block and develop those relationships. Um, it is, it's just continue to trust God because that's the biggest, biggest issue of all where people don't and they begin to worry about it. You still need to go out and work and you still need to put forth the effort to go out and find work. Okay. If, if you were in a job before that you weren't happy with, I think Jim said even a couple of weeks ago in a sermon or even a few weeks ago, that if you aren't happy with your job, go find something else. If That's right. This may be God's way of saying, go find another job. Yeah. And this may be something for you. Um, maybe you were an essential, you were not an essential worker before, and now you need to be an essential worker. There may be something for you out there that, that you don't know about. 
I, I went into an industry that I knew nothing about. Same customers. Yeah. But I, I shouldn't say nothing. I knew quite a bit, but I, not as much as I knew on the, on the, on this right. other side new. of the it business. It was new, right? You, you it was new. new. It yeah. was new. A lot That's of right. the, like I said, a lot of the same customers, but not something I didn't know a lot about. Yeah. It's it, at least in my opinion. It, it, yeah. I didn't know a lot about. Um, but, but to see where I'm at now and how much I've grown and how much I've learned just through talking with other uh, colleagues and, and going to association meetings, those types of things, that didn't just, God literally picked me up from this place, put me in this spot over here. And, and so if I look at the, how do I, how do I say this? If um, if you feel that you aren't qualified for that job, try it. Hmm. You just don't know. Okay. You just don't know. You know that. Um, it, for me, in my job, it wasn't more about my um, what I knew, and it wasn't necessarily who I knew. It was the fact that this was a job that focused on people. And and with that needed to come that I need to I need to get to know these people and develop a relationship with them. That's part of my job as being sales. That's what we're doing. And, and but again, it was something that I didn't know a lot of in the industry. Um, yeah. So, that's so maybe it's time. Maybe it's maybe it's just time for people to move on. You know, maybe it's yeah. time to find something else. But like I said, you can trust God, but that doesn't mean that you still you got to go out and look for it too. Um, you still need to pursue it. And, you know, don't tell people no, because you, you may get a job offer. Don't tell them no. Just say, if you have something over here that looks a little more promising, just pursue that for right then and there. But yeah, uh, be, you'll, you'll find that every day you move on and move forward, you'll be absolutely thankful for where you're at. Because I look at where I'm at today and extremely grateful, extremely thankful for where I'm at, um, what he's left us with. You know, we still have our house. We didn't have to sell off anything. Yeah. Um, I did sell off some things because it was just kind of, it, it made sense to do that, right? It was just like, well, I, I've got some time to sell off things. Let me do that. But it, it wasn't to put food on the table for us. It was, it was just, we've still got everything that we had before, but yet so much more, so mm. much more. That's good. That's um, good. It, I, it, I'll, Jenny, I, I'll, I'll say too that, yeah. um, talk to your wives, talk mm. to your spouses. Um, that's the other thing. Jenny was such a great person to um uh, she lent her ear to me and and um she just let me talk and she understood um that i was i was going through some i was having i would have my good days and i'd have my bad days and um you know she was always there to just pray for me and lift me up and just let me talk um and that's that's huge too just let me talk. It wasn't, it wasn't, she wasn't talking back to me by any means or saying, well, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that. It was just more of just letting me talk. And, and, and that was, that was massive um, for me. That's what I needed. I'm not normally that kind of person, but um, that's what I needed. Yeah. I, I love that, you know, lean, lean into trust, uh, you know, find some, find some safe people to talk to. I love that Jenny was one of those. Um, I, I like that you named, you went out and washed the car, right? Like you need, you need right. to do a thing. And so, you know, those who are, rather than yeah. just sitting back and, and hoping that things come to you, like you, you worked, you tried to figure out what, what next could be like. You even looked outside yeah. of things you knew how to do. Uh, you know, people who right now are looking for things to do. There are still volunteer opportunities out in the community. There are food banks that need volunteers. And I like, like at the end of the day, being able to say, I did a thing today. Right, those right. of us who are used to being kind of that primary financial provider for a family, to be able to say at the end of the day, I did a thing, instead of right. wondering, did I do anything, is is a right. good shift to make. I, I like all of that, John. Hey, if I had uh, a great, I had yeah. a great friend, man, that that was was literally volu like you said, volunteering, right? Um, that was volunteering at the baseball field. Another mm -hmm. Christian Christian friend of ours in the industry, and uh, he was volunteering at the baseball field. And, and this other dad came up to him and said, you know, I really like what you're doing. You ever, you ever thought about, you know, selling asphalt before? So he's like, no, I don't even know anything about it. Here he is, you know, 11 years later or whatever, still selling asphalt, that type wow. of thing. So, wow. Yeah. So, so it didn't, it, 
just never thought of doing anything like that. But because God put him there in that situation to volunteer for something, he provided him with a job. You know, that's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, so, John, I'd imagine, you know, when this thing goes live, we'll have you kind of, you know, throw a comment down below it so people know how to reach out to you. Uh, if, yeah. if, if somebody needs something from the church, uh, they can always email info at reallife.la. If they just need somebody to talk through stuff with, um, you know, one of our pastors or maybe even John can reach out in it and chat through some stuff. But, John, thanks for, thanks for spending time Thank with you. us today, man. Uh, thank the wife for uh, carving out part of her day to watch over the kids while you're doing this. Really appreciate it, man. Take care. Just thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yep.